Wales in the body of Christ is going to happen. When Peter walked down the streets of Jerusalem, they laid up the sick on mats and cots and beds, you know. They were sick and diseased. So as he walked by, his shadow would touch them and they all were healed, were set free. Now that was the presence of the Holy Spirit flowing out of Peter, healing the sick. It says in, in Acts chapter 19 that Paul was preaching the gospel in Ephesus. And handkerchiefs and aprons would touch Paul's body. He would send them to the sick. And the sick would be healed. Isn't it amazing? Yeah. I've seen that happen in Africa. I was preaching in Africa in 2012, March. Do you know why I know? Because we were playing France back home. And we won the Grand Slam. I couldn't watch it. I was preaching in Africa at night. And a pastor asked me, can you pray for this handkerchief? Because my, my baby is at home with a fever. And a really bad, bad fever. So I prayed for it, give it to him. Next day, he brought the baby to church, totally healed. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's not, listen now. I'm not blowing my trumpet. Because you know me. My family. I got sick family members. I'm not blowing my trumpet, guys. I rock. It's not about me. It's not about you. You see, it's the same Holy Spirit that was on Jesus. The same Holy Spirit that was on Peter. It's the same Holy Spirit on me. The same Holy Spirit on you. If you believe. The Bible says, nothing is impossible for those who believe. Amen. And those who take risks. And Amen. those who step out in boldness. I was talking to a pastor. And the pastor was from London. And they stopped him from using this building because of COVID rules and that. And, and, and he, he was saying this. That he can no longer use, use the church. So he said, I might start going out to push the gospel. And so I said, go out. And he said, well, how would you do it? Well, be honest, I said, I just opened my mouth and trust Jesus. Because when I'm on the streets preaching the gospel, see, sometimes I'm there and I'm thinking, I'm going to stand here when Anthony plays this song and sings one song I preach after him. I'm there thinking to myself, these people are not going to really want to hear what I'm saying. But I've got to come against that. Are you with me? Yeah. So I preach anyway. And God gives me the words, so he gives me the boldness. The Apostle Paul. <laughs> Listen now. You read the epistles of Paul. He never once prayed for power. He prayed for revelation. Are you with me? Revelation. He prayed for revelation. Yeah. To understand who we are in Christ. And he prayed, may the Lord give me the boldness I need to preach. To make the message plain. And that's what the guys prayed in Acts chapter 4. He said, Lord, fill, fill us with boldness so we can preach your message. And they went out preaching the gospel boldly. And signs and wonders and miracles confirmed the word. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Mm. Are you with me? Yeah. I'm going to finish now. I'm going to wrap this up. In Samuel, see, God wants us to encounter the Holy Spirit. God wants us to encounter His Spirit. Are you with me? Yeah. Are you up for encountering the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Yes. I am. I need Him. I need the Holy Spirit body. I know He's here right now. Yeah. But I need to get to know Him more intimately. Yeah. I want to yield my life totally to His power. Amen. In Samuel chapter, 1 Samuel chapter 9, I think it is. Don't quote me, maybe chapter 8 or chapter 9, chapter 10, around there. In 1 Samuel, okay? Now, Kish, Saul, King Saul in the Bible, Kish, his daddy, lost his donkeys. Donkeys, so, and, uh, you know, and, <laughs> that's the joke, I'm going to say joke. Mm. I got a joke with my mind, so I'm going to say <laughs> And, uh, he, he lost the donkey, so Saul went out to search for the donkeys with his servant. And the Bible says he went through all of, of Israel looking for his donkeys. And on the third day, the servant said to Saul, 
There's a seer here called Samuel. He's a prophet. He can tell us where the donkeys are. I said, wow, so let's go and see him. So he went down into the town to see Samuel. But the Lord, the night before, told this to Samuel. Listen now. The Lord said this to Samuel the night before. This time tomorrow, I'm going to send a man called Saul to you. You've you, you got to hear this now. See, Saul thought he was wandering around. But God was bringing him into a divine appointment with his destiny. Are you with me? He thought he'd look for donkeys. You know, where's my donkey? Uh, <laughs> Where's my donkey? Gordon. Yeah, anyway. But he thought he was to look for some, his father's donkeys. But God had his hand upon him. Are you with me? He was bringing him to divine appointment. We think we're wandering through life sometimes, thinking nothing's but God's got his hand upon you, bringing you right into an appointment with himself mm. to transform your life. And so, this is now. Saul shows up and Sam was, yes, yeah, said, the Lord showed me already. And the Lord said, tonight you will eat with me. So they went to the high place to eat this meal. And Samuel said to his servant, bring up the choice meat I set, set aside for Saul. Can you imagine Saul's face here? What's going on here? Mm. I'm here by chance, I thought. No, God's hands upon you. For an encounter with Holy Spirit. Yeah, man. Transform your life. And so he eats, eats the food. And next day, you know, he tells him that God's picked him to be king of Israel. And he gives him a whole list of things that's going to happen. And at the end of that day, he's going to encounter a bunch of prophets. And he's going to be filled with the spirit of God. And he's going to be turned into a different person. Amen? Is that good news? Fantastic. That's awesome news, guys. Think about it. He thought he was looking for the father's donkeys. But God set him up. And God is setting us up. I believe that. God is setting you up for an encounter with him. To transform your life. Why? Because he loves you. Why? Because God's got a purpose for you. God, you were here not by accident. I always thought, I, you know, I remember one time, I honestly thought this, see, I, I was set, I was set by somebody. Somebody said to me, why not use it? Your style of preaching don't work here, boy. Mm. It works in Africa, America. And someone said to me, if you were back in revival times, they would have loved you, Derry. So I always thought, man, I must have been born out of time, right in the wrong time. Mm. So the enemy gets into your mind and lies to you. Mm. Yeah. I really thought that for a season in my life, I thought, well, I, I, I should be born earlier. I'm born in, in, in the wrong time, in the wrong place, you know. And I thought that. And I believed that for a while. Because I was like, I was like, a, a, I was like a, trying to, a square peg, trying to fit in the round hole. I didn't fit. But you see, but you call for such a time as this. There are times and seasons we go through. Always there's times and seasons where God prepares you in a certain place. Then to bring you forward quickly. Like John the Baptist was prepared in the wilderness. Until the word of the Lord came to him. It's time, John. <laughs> and you think I'm wild. John the Baptist is much more wilder than me. He, he, he was a shouter. He was, he, he was a blaster. Jesus was a shouter too, believe it or not. If you read in the little we trust, he, when he preached, he, he spoke with gravity and force. He heralded the kingdom in. Amen? Why? Because the Holy Spirit makes you bold. Ah, mm -hmm. Sean, I'm not naturally like this. No. I'm not naturally bold. That's not me. I'm a boy from Kyra Park. That's all I am. You from Kyra Park? No, I'm from Aberdeen. 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 I was preaching it two weeks ago, a week ago, on the street. Jerry, are you with me? <coughs> When God's called me, God picked me. He's picked you. He's called you. He's chosen you. If you've got breath in your lungs, it's not over. God's got a purpose for you. Amen. He Amen. really has. Yeah, He's got yeah. destiny for you. And there's anointing for you. The Holy Spirit wants to fill you. 
He wants to fill you. But are you willing for Him to fill you? Lord, yes, Lord. Are you willing? Yes. Yeah. Are you willing? Stupid guys, you know, guys, yes. when you get to the end of yourself, I'm like this, I'm all in. What the heck? What's the point of stepping out anymore? Or so what's the point of holding back anymore? You might as well jump in fully into God. Because when you jump fully into God, then he takes over. You take, your, you take your hand off the steering wheel. Not in real life, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Keep your hand on the steering wheel, please. Yeah. You take your hand off the steering wheel and you give it to Jesus. You look, God, I want you. Well, God, I don't understand anything, God, but I want you. And listen, guys, there's no better adventure when we're not in control, when we give our lives to Jesus. There's no better adventure. Who knows? What you be doing, who knows where you be going, who knows who you be speaking to, who knows where he will send you, who knows? But it will be an adventure, really well. Isaiah, I'm finishing now, Isaiah chapter 6. Are you okay? Yeah. yeah. You're not bored? No, no, carry on, carry on. Isaiah 6. I'm going to share this. Okay. Isaiah 6. When Isaiah encountered the Lord. Isaiah chapter 6. It says, He saw the Lord high and lifted up. Amen? He saw the train of his rope fill the temple. Then he said, I'm a man and them. When he encountered God, he saw his true state. And when we encounter God, guys, we see our true state, we really do. Do we reckon that he is so perfect, so loving, so kind, so awesome? And his love just <coughs> washes us clean of all our wrongdoing and heals us more of the hurts inside of us. That's where he's not. But Isaiah said this, I'm a man of unclean lips who live amongst the people whose speech is tainted. Then an angel came from a tongue from the altar and stuck on his lips and said, See, your sins are torn for. And that's an encounter with fire. So, Elijah, so not Elijah, sorry, Isaiah had an encounter with the fire of God. And instantly, after that encounter, his ears were opened. Because God said, Who can I send? And, and Isaiah said, Send me, Lord. Send me. Are you with me? Yeah. So when you encounter the fire of God, your spiritual ears are open, and you're open, and you cannot help but not go. 2007. I never share this at all. I share this when I teach in my denomination Bible school every so often on supernatural and healing power of God. I, in one seminar, I do share this, so I'm about to share right now. But I'm sharing this for a reason, okay, for a purpose. I'm not blowing my trumpet, okay? Hear me right now. Mm -hmm. This is about encountering God, what God does with encounters. God said to me, He sent me to Africa in a dream. To see miracle signs and wonders. I said, okay, great. All of a sudden, one night I wake up in, in, in my bed. And I feel this, this, I feel electricity going right through my body, up and down. Power, fire going right through my body, up and down. Fire the power of God, going right through me. Waves of fire. I thought I was gonna die. It was so intense. I was like that, oh my God, my God. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Get off me in Jesus' name. And I began to read it. God sent an angel to baptize me in fire. Hmm. You with me? Yeah. Listen now. Half a year later, I was in Africa preaching the gospel, miracles, signs, and wonders, and I got released into preaching the gospel on the world. Amen? Yeah. yeah. Amen? Amen. It's enough. There's more. The encounters with the Lord. There are times when the Lord of I'm, I'm, I'm believing this as I'm sharing this. It's funny, I, I, I believe. When, when you give a test, you release the atmosphere for, for miracles, and the same can happen. I believe that. Another time, 2011, 
I was begging the Lord, I want to encounter you. Lord, show me who you are. Lord, I want to know you more. And, and I knew oh, there was angels in my house showing up. I just knew it. So I was watching God TV the next night. And I said, if you, if you feel angels in, in the room, ask him what they want. So I thought, okay, I'll give, give, give that a go next time. Mm-hmm. So night time came. I was laying down. I felt the atmosphere. It's the angels who were everywhere. I just felt it, the presence. I was half and half in and out of sleep. I said, what do you want? And all of a sudden, I don't know if I was in my body or out of my body. I don't know. I can't tell. But I knew it happened. There was this glory angel dancing over me. And a ball of white light fire there. I put my hand in the ball of fire. And all these gemstones came out. I said, I don't be able to pick up these gemstones. But before that happened, the guy said to me, I'm going to encounter the fire of God. You know, the real fire of God. This is real stuff. Why is an empowerment to go through stuff? It's an empowerment, a spiritual empowerment of the power of God to transform your life. Because God now is releasing angels to work with us. Amen. We don't worship angels. I, I, it's common sense. We don't worship angels. So we will actually, we will actually, angels are here to serve us. Do you know that? Yeah. It says in the world to come, angels are under us. We are children, we are sons and daughters of God. We are made in his image. The angels are not made in his image. We are made in the image of God. Amen? But I know this, guys, right? To change wills, I need, you know what? I want another encounter with God. I want the Holy Ghost down whenever. Amen? Because I can't live off yesteryear's bread from heaven. Are you with me? Can you imagine to eat, eat a meal from 10 years ago? Can you imagine that? A Garth bakery, in the bakery, they cook, they cook some bread 2011 and they give it to you to eat. You look, I'm stupid. Are you with me? <coughs> we need God. We need the power of God. You see, the, I remember one guy, I'm going to finish that, I will finish. One guy said this. I don't get up much, do I say? <laughs> <laughs> you get up too often. I have my hair, so I can't get too often. <laughs> Why do you this? Oh, we need Wigglesworth back. We need Evan Roberts. And I honor Wigglesworth. Wigglesworth was a miracle worker for God years ago. Miracle, Evan Roberts was like a revivalist preaching where millions, got, well, not millions, hundreds of thousands got saved, got healed, that sort of thing. He was a big, big preacher who did miracles for God. <coughs> I didn't know that. I, if he was alive, if Billy Graham was alive, if they were alive, do you know what? It's full of rubbish. But it's the Holy Spirit in them. And it was Christ in them that made a difference. See, God says this, if you seek my kingdom first, seek me first, then all these things will be added to you. Everything back to you. So it's about him alone. And see, see he, is, he is the spirit of revival. Do that. He is the spirit of revival. Yeah. He is the spirit of awakening. <coughs> the Holy Spirit is the Lord of the spirit realm. <coughs> it's okay. It's fine. It's all right. Come on. See, the Holy Spirit is the Lord of the spirit realm. He's Lord. He's God. And saints, he is knocking right now at the church's door. Saying, will you let me in? Will you let me take control? Will you let me mess up your nice meetings? Are you willing? See, when revival comes, revival's messy. Do you know that? Revival's messy. Like now, I'm preaching. It's, it's not the normal sermon or... Half hour preaching is over. It's messy. It's different. Because the Holy Ghost wants to move. And he wants to move in the church. And God is saying, if you seek me now, with all your hearts, seek me. Focus on me. Because God wants to bring a harvest in. A harvest of souls. I believe that. Amen. And God needs the church to rise up and say, Lord, I'm available. 
I am available, Lord. I am send me. God is looking for Isaiah. Send me, Lord. Send me, Lord. Gideon was 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 Gideon was just a stinker, a depressed stinker. That was Gideon. But God said to Gideon, "Go in the strength you have." And I will send you. So can, I, can I pray to finish? And I pray to finish? Yeah. I'm just going to ask, this is the time we pray together, we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to come. Mm-hmm. And ask this world to encounter God. It's, it's, it's like a seeking meeting where we encounter God, where we encounter Him. It's because I need Him. I really need Him. I know that much. I, I can't do anything without Him. I'm not just saying that. I know me. I know my struggles. I know my circumstances. I know my family. And without His power, we are gone. Are you with me? Yeah. yeah. Same for all of us, really. But the thing is, he loves us. But God wants to bring us to a point that where he wants, he wants us to be honest with ourselves. Honesty is everything. But when you're honest with God, you know, God just says, okay, I, I'm going to work that with you. And I will touch you and I will change you. Let's just pray. Father, if you can stand up, stand up to praise. If you can't stand up, uh, sit down. Father, I thank you, God. You're the God who gives us emotions, Lord. Lord, you love emotions, Father. Lord, you're full of emotions, Lord. Lord, it says in the of night, Lord, you dance around us with spinning, with dancing, Lord. You celebrate this, Lord. Lord, heaven is full of emotion. Heaven is full of celebration, God. So it's good to have emotions. It's good, Lord, to sing, jump, dance, shout, smash the drums, Father. Play that guitar, Lord, like a rock nut person. I thank you for your goodness, Father. But Lord, Lord, we ask for you. We ask for you, Holy Spirit. And Lord, we recognize. We recognize, Father, that we need your power, God. And we recognize, Father, the, <coughs> the political realm cannot change, God. Our nation cannot change, God. Nothing can change, God, except by the power of your Holy Spirit, God. Lord, and we recognize, Father, it's only the anointing breaks the yoke. Nothing else. So Holy Spirit, I ask you, you, you guys, pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. You, you, you can repeat the prayer after me, but pray for yourself. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to come. I'm asking you to fill me afresh, Father. And fill my friends afresh, Lord. I'm asking God, you can, God. Even in the night season, God, in dreams, Lord, in visions, Father, with the angelic God, beings, Father, releasing the seraphims, God, to bring the fire of heaven to earth. So I'm asking right now, Father, God, we just touch and fill us, Lord. Lord, and I'm asking you, Holy Spirit, show us Jesus. Show us the Father. I'm asking the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation, would rest upon us, Father. In absolute power, God, that we might know you better. For Spirit of God, I recognize I need you. Lord, we recognize we need you. So, Lord, I'm asking right now that your power would fall. If anyone wants prayer right now, let me know I pray for you. Anyone wants prayer right now, I will pray for you right now. <coughs>